In the previous video, we learned about the idea of a local extreme, I'm a local max or local min. In this video, we're gonna actually talk about a related concept known as the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum or the neutral term here would be absolute extremum. Because with a local maximum, all that means is that it's the biggest point in some neighborhood. No one got bigger than it in that neighborhood. But the absolute maximum is referencing the, the very biggest Y coordinate in the range of the function. And similarly, the absolute minimum will describe the very, very, very smallest Y coordinate in the entire range. And then absolute extrema means it's it's either an absolute maximum or absolute minimum. And so if you look at this graph right here, for example, we can very quickly identify the local extrema. We see that there's a local minimum right here at x equals negative one. Uh, there's another local minimum right here at x equals three. And then finally, there is a local maximum right here this is a local maximum at x equals one. Now, if we ask the question about absolute extremum, I want to note that there is an absolute max, a minimum right here at x equals three, right? This is not just a local minimum, this is the absolute minimum because there is no y coordinate on this graph that ever gets smaller than y equals three. Uh, the local minimum here at x equals negative one, it's a local minimum, but it's not the absolute because we get smaller values. What about the absolute maximum here? Uh, what would be the biggest y coordinate in this function's range? Well, we're tempted to say that the local maximum is an absolute maximum, right? Uh, but that's actually not the case because it turns out that this y coordinate of two is not the biggest one. Um, it can go up to three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or keep on going off the screen, right? There y equals two is not the biggest y coordinate. Um, so this one right here is not gonna be the absolute maximum, just like this wasn't the, the absolute minimum. Uh, but what is the absolute maximum then, right? You'll notice that as, if we look at the picture right here, it seems to be increasing, right? So the y coordinates is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So if we allow x to go as far as we want, right? So if we allow x to go to the far, 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 far right, then the y coordinate's gonna go up and 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 up. That's what this arrow here is indicating. It's telling us that if we continue to the right, the function will continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so to shorthand this, we often say things like the following. As x approaches infinity, right, as x goes to the far right, then y approaches infinity as well. That's what this uh, northeast arrow represents on the graph. Similarly, if we look at this arrowhead over here, this tells us that as x goes to the far left, the function will continue to go up and up and up and up. So this northwestern arrowhead is telling us that as x approaches negative infinity, then y will likewise approach infinity as well. So because y is approaching infinity, there is no absolute maximum. The absolute maximum doesn't exist because the y coordinates get bigger and bigger and bigger. And therefore there is no biggest number in the range. Infinity is itself not a number, so we can't really count that one. So this is an example of a function which has an absolute minimum, but has no absolute maximum. Um, some other examples, uh, you could take this parabola, for example. Uh, this parabola has an absolute maximum at its y-intercept. Uh, it's also a local maximum, of course. Notice, of course, that every absolute extremum will be a local extremum, but local extrema don't have to be absolute extrema like we see. Uh, and also this function, much like the one we saw previously, its absolute minimum uh, does not exist because the function, if you look over here, this downward uh, trajectory, this southwestern arrow here is telling us that as x goes to infinity, y is going to approach negative infinity. And that's right here tells us that there's not an absolute minimum. And likewise, as we go on this uh, southwestern, southwestern arrow, right, you're going to get as x approaches negative infinity, oh boy, negative infinity, y will likewise approach negative infinity as well. And so this function doesn't have an absolute minimum. Uh, in this example, uh, we can see what, well, this actually kind of looks like the first one we're seeing in this video, right? We can see that there's again a local, a local max right here at x equals one, uh, but that is not 
an absolute maximum. Again, this thing is pointing upwards, right? Um, as X approaches plus or minus infinity, right? Look on the other side, you're doing the same thing. As X approaches plus or minus infinity, Y approaches infinity. And so that tells us that the absolute maximum doesn't exist again because Y is going towards the infinity. Uh, on the other hand though, we have at X equals negative one, we have a point, which is a local minimum. Uh, at X equals three, we have a point, which is also a local minimum. And you'll notice that in both situations, the Y coordinate is zero. So who's the absolute minimum? Um, is the absolute minimum X at X equals negative one or at X equals three? And the answer is gonna be both, it's a tie because both of them obtain the smallest value in the range, they're both absolute minima. And they're both absolute minima because their, their Y coordinates are equal to each other and they are the smallest in the entire range. So it is possible to have multiple uh, absolute extrema, but that's because their Y coordinates actually agree with each other. And this is how you can find the absolute extrema on, a, on the graph of a function.